Hello everybody, my name is the Chicken Rep, and today I'll be teaching you all about how to become a better League player and subsequently how to raise your MMR. But before we continue, I'd like to share some exposition on how my League of Legends career got started. When I started playing League, I was bad. I just transitioned over from barely playing Dota All-Stars to barely playing League of Legends, and there wasn't really a tutorial for either game at the time. My friends played on occasion, and they were pretty elitist, whereas I was just messing around trying to have fun because I didn't take the game seriously at all. I did things like play AP Ash because I knew it would upset my friend who played Trindamir because I could steal his kills with the 1500 damage Ash arrow to the face from Spawn. And it was a blast, it was great! But then I picked up Ranked when Riot released it at around level 25 because you could queue for it before level 30 at that point, which was kind of weird on Riot's part, but hey, whatever, they fixed it. I absolutely tanked. Literally. I played a ton of Rammus because I thought he was a blast to play. This didn't go over too well though, because I didn't really know that much about the game because I played casually and for fun. I dropped below 1250, which was bronze I think at the time, and went as far down as around 800 ELO. I did the season at 1120, I was pretty close to bronze, but I was so far away. In season 2, I reached silver. Not gold, but I was proud of my accomplishments and how far I'd come from season 1. I made a lot of advancements from season 1, like learning how to CS properly, learning that it perhaps wasn't all about the kills, and most importantly, that I couldn't ever trust my team when I played a tank like Rammus with no hard engage, because people would get confused and usually wouldn't follow me up. I picked up Shaco again and started playing a good deal of burst damage characters and also Shyvana for my go-to tank. Shyvana was actually really my general go-to jungler at the time because I could abuse exhaust and smite on her and she was just really really good and strong in the jungle because it was so easy to clear and season 2 is absolutely ridiculous. But the most important thing about Shyvana was that not only was she a tank like Rammus who could actually deal damage, but she also had a hard engage, which is something that Rammus lacked. In Season 3, I picked up Cassidy because I sat there and thought to myself, this is a really powerful champion that fell off everyone's radar from the earlier seasons. Cassidy was that guy. Until XP could play them in competitive and well. You know the rest of that story. But when Cassidy became a permaban, instead, I took the next best thing and played AP Tristana mid and AP Tristana bot. I hit platinum after a long time of struggling in gold and made it as far as my diamond pro runs, which I lost, went on tilt over, and ended the season in platinum 4. What I did learn out of that season though was that champions could be played in more than one role, and that really helped because no one really played Tristana, so if I couldn't play her in mid lane, I could play her in the bot lane as an AD carry. So I was always familiar with her spells and her damage and just her general style of play. Which means I was never really lost when I was trying to fight someone because I always knew what I should be doing against them. When Season 4 came around, I was placed in Gold 4 and went straight to Plat in less than 50 games. I failed my Diamond promos about 5 times and ended the season in Platinum 1. I continued playing my burst damage characters, and I also started picking up more non-mobile options like Vagar for when they had very powerful mages. I spent a lot of time playing Caterpicks this season because I was finally confident in my ability to play any champion in the game after practicing so much. I stopped going to counter websites that I visited often in Season 3 to see if I was getting the right counters because at this point, I was able to look at the team and go, we need this, this, and this, instead of saying, I think we need this, let me double check. Now, in Season 5, I've hit Diamond twice and I'm one of the most experienced League of Legends players out there. Not only that, but I know the answers to just about every single League of Legends related question you could possibly throw at me, because I like the game enough to not only play it a lot, but also learn as much about it as I possibly could. I play to win, but I also play for fun. I've learned a lot about getting better, and I've learned a lot about raising your MMR in League of Legends. Today, I'd like to share some of that with you. For starters, pick what you're comfortable with, not what you think will work best against your opponent. Play what you know, not what your team wants you to play. You might have played Scion once, 
but that doesn't mean that you know all of his ins and outs just yet. It's always better to go with a safe pick than with a potentially dangerous pick. Next, never play a tank without a hard engage unless you have confidence in your team to follow you up or unless you have a tank with hard engage already on your team. This will save a lot of headaches and a lot of screaming back and forth in ally chat over whose fault it is. Yours for engaging or theirs for not paying attention. Try to play champions who can play more than one role. The more roles a champion can reliably play, the better. Because you can always pick that champion and then you can always go out and play them in whatever role you need to play them in. For example, Darius can be a top laner, mid laner, jungler, or a niche high damage support pick. So can Pantheon, so can Jarvan, so can Jaco. Don't start needless drama and don't ever retaliate! I've learned this the hard way about retaliation by being banned for it. Even if you just want to tell them to screw off and mind their own business, don't. I've even gotten in trouble for defending my teammates by saying that. The tribunal is an unforgiving place, but it is what it is. Mute your teammates, and if they're showing any signs of negative behavior, just report them after the game. It'll save you a lot of stress, especially if your team is underperforming at the time. Next, if you lose a few games in a row, it's time to take a break. I know you might not always want to, but it's definitely affecting you. It took me a long time to realize this, but once I did, I started winning a lot more games than I was losing because I was able to discern when was a good time to continue and when it was time to stop. I used to play four, five, six games in a row when I was losing and when I was upset and when I was on tilt and it just didn't work because I just kept getting more and more and more upset to the point where I didn't want to play the game anymore at all. And this is because I let what my teammates say get to me, and because I let the negativity of losing a game affect me in a less than stellar way. I have a lot more to tell you guys, but the video is getting kind of long, so I'm just going to cut it here. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will get the next one out as soon as I can. Until then, good luck and have fun. Whoa, 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 whoa